let's get uh, first up about uh, why you think Brady decided to finally hang them up in your estimation. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's one reason. I do think that you can't overlook the fact that football is really hard. And <laughs> he's made it look so easy for so long that it's kind of easy to take for granted. But it is really hard to play football especially entering your 40s at a high level. Nobody really knows except for him what that's like. And I think that he was being honest when he referenced in his statement today that, you know, he didn't feel like he could give that effort, right? He's always said, once you stop, you're done. And But I do think there were some other factors at play. I mean, he loved the coaches in Tampa Bay. But he, you know, we referenced it in his statement today that he would drive Bruce Arians crazy. I mean, sometimes the Bucs coaches – weren't quite as buttoned up as things were in New England. And I think that, you know, the way you saw the way they lost that game to the Rams, isolating Cooper Cup on a safety is an example of that. Um, You know, they're a team in transition, and they're going to have some roster and salary cap issues. And then I think that more than anything, you saw him take steps this past year to be known as more than just Tom Brady, the quarterback, and really more than Tom Brady, the quarterback, and fitness guru. I mean, you saw – he, he launched his podcast with Jim Gray and Larry Fitzgerald. He did Man in the Arena um, and the Brady brand. I think that he – that it really seemed to energize him in a way that, you know, for the longest time I think that only football could. And, you know, he sees a lot of global potential with that, especially with the TB12, you know, pairing it up with some of the methodologies of the TB12. All that said – this is a gigantic hole that he is leaving in his life. It's a void. There's a reason why he's said in the past that he'll consider therapy when he walks away because, as, as Giselle has said, football is his first love. And um, as we know with, with great athletes, when they walk away, the golf courses and the private jets and you know the cushy paid speeches get old fast. Yeah, I know, and it's just it's going to be weird for fans too because um, I, I thought he could have kept playing, you know, and um, and obviously he didn't end it um, with a win in the Super Bowl, and I always thought that you know Tom Brady would absolutely add himself to the list of Peyton Manning and Strahan and Elway and Bettis, right? That mm-hmm. you know uh, that that's the way they did it. You know Ray Ray Lewis, right? I mean, like that's the way to do it. And he wouldn't want to even walk into the bust room one day knowing he's got the every possible record that others have something that he doesn't. You know, I I, I always kind of figure, but you can't control that. Um, can't, with the exception of last year, he could have. Last year he could have. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's always been a little bit different. Like there was a moment that. I was at his. I was in his living room, and we were talking. And this was maybe seven years ago. It was before the sort of rest of the dynasty, which not only the Patriots but really the Tom Brady dynasty, kind of was reclamated. And he was telling me about they had just lost to the Ravens in the playoffs, and he told me that Kurt Warner had sent him a text after the game saying, like, being the best doesn't mean you always win. It just means you win more than anybody else. And that text really meant a lot to him because it, it spoke to his essence in a way that very few messages could. It, yes, it's always about winning, but it was often in failure that he found successes. And, you know, the, the people, there's people who argued he'd never leave New England after throwing a pick six on his final throw against the Titans. And there's people who'd argue he'd never go out losing to the Los Angeles Rams in the playoffs. But, you know, that was, it, ne- it always misread him just a little bit. I think that what he prided himself on as much as anything is this kind of genius he had of refusing to concede to anyone else's idea of the inevitable or of reality in that regard.